Hello there, and welcome to The American Approach, brought to you by Citizens for Liberty. I'm your host, Honor Bell, and I want to share something with you that I am extremely passionate about. I think we can all agree that the world of politics can be very intimidating at times. There are so many things to look at, whether that's a candidate, a party, or ideology, that make the whole process seem just really overwhelming. But I am here to keep it simple for you, and hopefully some of the information I share will help clear things up and inspire you to learn more. Until about a year ago, I was completely clueless as to what was in the Constitution, and I would just hate to hear what past me would answer when asked what the Bill of Rights is. But the world certainly has turned upside down, and desperate times call for patriotic measures. I see great value in American history. Even though it isn't the most popular subject right now, We have to learn from our past to avoid making the same mistakes. This is absolutely true for the framers of America. Before America was established, our founders were under England's tyrannical dictatorship. King George passed many unlawful acts, such as the Stamp Act, a way to control the colonists' media and printing, and the Declaratory Act, which said that Parliament was allowed to pass any act to control colonists without their consent. If you're thinking some of this sounds familiar, you are absolutely correct. America is definitely seeing a King George-style government overreach in present day. Fortunately for the colonists, the Declaration of Independence set them free from England's criminal ways and created a new nation in 1776. However, It wasn't until 1787 that the Constitution was even proposed, and it would be another year before the required nine states would ratify it. Nevertheless, our lovely Constitution was established, and the colonists were free thanks to its contents. Though there are 27 amendments in the Constitution's entirety, the first 10 are labeled the Bill of Rights. This includes free speech, your right to own a gun if you so choose, your right to a speedy and public trial, and many more. The Constitution limits the government's power, but the Bill of Rights guarantees our freedom. There's a little something our founding fathers put right before all of this super important stuff. That's right, I'm talking about the preamble to the Constitution. It reads, We the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity, do ordain and establish this Constitution for the United States of America. Is that a mouthful or what? Though it may sound like a fancy old Englishman talking, the preamble is actually a really important piece in our government's puzzle. The first three words set up America's format, we the people. When the framers were creating the Constitution, they intended for the government to work for the people, not the other way around. Our entire system is based on this logic of self-governance, and it's all because of the pilgrims that established America. Their vision for the United States was a nation built on biblical principles, a nation where Christians would govern themselves. After all, 1 Timothy 3.5 says, For if a man know not how to rule his own house, how shall he take care of the church of God? The three little words, we the people, placed so purposefully in the preamble has been the sole platform for our country. The preamble shares the Constitution's main objectives, the first being establishing justice. The framers wanted to ensure fair treatment to each individual. Without an establishing of justice, America wouldn't have a fair court system or consequences for those who commit morally wrong actions. 
Domestic tranquility is very simple. I like to call it inner peace. Now, I don't mean finding a sense of calmness and security in your own individual self, but in your country. It is to keep peace and order within the borders of America. Are there riots happening in your backyard? Do your coworkers not sit with you because of what you believe in? Are you facing discrimination based on your own personal health choices? If so, then you probably are lacking in the domestic tranquility department. Next up is provide for the common defense. Providing a common defense means the government supplies a national military for its people. So if there is a potential threat outside of the U.S., America is prepared to protect all citizens. Congress has the power to declare war, but the president is the commander-in-chief. His purpose is not only to defend, but to maintain peace. When the framers said promote the general welfare, they were referring to the American citizens' basic, everyday needs. This includes things like housing, education, food, and more. It is safe to say the government has gone way overboard with this part of the preamble. James Madison once said, With respect to the words general welfare, I have always regarded them as qualified by the detail of powers connected with them. To take them in a literal and unlimited sense would be a metamorphosis of the Constitution into a character which there is a host of proofs was not contemplated by its creators. Long story short, the government should only think of general welfare as the general needs of the people, not to supply them with microscopic requests. Another way to describe Madison's statement is limited government. Lastly, secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity. A promise to stand for freedom for both present and future Americans. This is the part of the preamble that America is missing today. Ronald Reagan once said, Freedom is never more than one generation away from extinction, and he couldn't have been more right. Today we are seeing a multitude of our God-given, unalienable rights, meaning things that are unable to be taken from or given away, disappear. Between mask and vaccine mandates, school boards refusing to listen to parents' comments, and the simple unborn baby's right to life on trial, America has strayed from its established foundation. As a college student, I am far more than fearful for my generation and the generations to come. Our willingness to submit without question is alarming, And I think part of the problem is our lack of education. This is why we must understand American history. This is why we have to learn about our founding documents and the rights they enclose. If we don't learn and fail to share our knowledge with others, how will the American spirit survive? How will future freedom be ensured? So many kids all across America are missing out on opportunities because of this country's poor leadership and failure to recognize basic human rights. I had earned a spot on one of my college's athletic teams earlier this summer. I went to camp, learned a lot of content, and then was sent a COVID compliance form, which stated I had to wear a mask while performing or get tested, even if I was asymptomatic. I didn't even get to go to my very first practice. I was kicked off when I said I couldn't sign the form. Not only am I missing out on performing, but I've also had to wear a mask in every building on campus. And just recently, all students and faculty received an email saying that a vaccine mandate is on the horizon. My college education, as well as thousands of other students, has been seriously impaired. The hardest thing to witness is the fact that most students, my age and lower, don't even know that their rights have been infringed on. 
So if no one has told you this today, allow me to remind you, you have the right, the constitutional, unalienable, God-given right of choice. Whether that be wearing a mask, not wearing a mask, refusing or accepting the vaccine, these choices should be made on your own terms. And that choice you make should not in any way, shape, or form affect the way you are treated. This, my friends, is what the Constitution was made for. We are blessed to have had framers with such intuition and foresight. The documents they created were made to defend the American people during times like these. We have to learn about our past, our history. We have to know about the people who came before us so we can defend the people who come after. But our responsibility as free Americans lies not only in education, but in action. This is not a time of silence, but a time to speak up. It's not a time of sitting and waiting. It's a time of standing and doing what we know is right. To finish Reagan's quote, he said, We didn't pass it to our children in the bloodstream. It must be fought for, protected, and handed on for them to do the same. Or one day, We will spend our sunset years telling our children and our children's children what it was once like in the United States where men were free. So what can you do? How do you take back power from an overreaching government? Start by doing your research. Get yourself a pocket constitution and study up. The Constitution is about 4,500 words, including the signatures, and takes approximately a half an hour to read, so you have no excuse not to be informed. Before I go, I'd like to leave you with a quote from the one and only Abraham Lincoln. Let every American, every lover of liberty, every well-wisher to his posterity, support the Constitution. Let it be taught in schools and seminaries and colleges. Let it be written in primers and spelling books and in almanacs. Let it be preached from the pulpit, proclaimed in legislative halls, and enforced in courts of justice. In short, let it become the political religion of the nation, and in particular, establish a reverence for the Constitution. I pray for strength courage, and perseverance for patriots during this time. May you always stand for what is right and kneel only for the God above. Thanks for listening. Join me next month on December 4th to hear more of the American approach with your patriot and friend, Honor Bell. In the meantime, stay encouraged, stay prayed up, and keep it constitutional, ladies and gents. The purpose of Citizens for Liberty is to provide methods for the service delivery of educating the citizens of Indiana and our federal republic on the United States Constitution and the Indiana State Constitution with particular emphasis on reestablishing the understanding of our unalienable rights in the hearts and minds of all citizens. Go to www.citizensforliberty.org. That's www.citizensforliberty.org to learn more about the organization.